Greetings everyone. In the last video we explored all things GSM, which introduced the world to digital mobile telephony and ushered in some usable mobile computing especially when the core network expanded to packet switching elements used for GPRS. This would also introduce the first iPhone that would really change networks as they desperately needed to address data rates and UMTS and HSPA networks would do just that. In this video, we will look at the features a UMTS network provides over GSM. We'll look at the signal characteristics and access method that UMTS will use. We'll be looking at the network architecture and then at upgrades to UMTS, which would be HSPA, the road to 4G. So when we left GSM, we had added GPRS and introduced the packet switching core that bumped data rates up to 270 kilobits per second, which for the time was an improvement, but yeah, still pretty slow. Enter the Universal Mobile Telecommunication Systems, or UMTS, a 3G cellular network. It pretty much carries over all the features of GSM like SMS, call waiting, and the rest, but would significantly increase data rates up to 2 megabits per second, and would allow for more network capacity. Over 100 simultaneous voice calls could occur over a single UMTS channel thanks to a new air interface, Wideband Code Division Multiple Access. Or WCDMA. UMTS uses WCDMA, which combines the digital information from multiple users into a single bitstream that is modulated together. Every device has a unique code that when applied to the combined bitstream will retrieve the data meant for that device. This code has a much higher bitrate than the transmitted data, but this is necessary to guarantee proper data recovery because the coded signal is modulated over a 5 MHz channel with a technique called spread spectrum. Normally, the digital information shifts the carrier frequency phase to four possible states, each represented by two bits of binary data, which are referred to as symbols. This is referred to as quadrature phase shift keying. The modulated data would produce a narrow band signal, but when combined with the higher rate code, or spreading code, the signal now spreads over the 5 MHz. While this might seem like an unnecessary amount of spectrum being used, consider that a hundred different transmissions can occur at the same time without interfering with each other, and all of a sudden you realize that there is significant spectral efficiency here. Now, to crunch the numbers, the modulation that is used for UMTS is QPSK. So each symbol represents two bits. With 5 MHz of bandwidth, 3.8 4 million symbols can be transmitted in a second, and double that is the bitrate of 7.68 megabits per second. But keep in mind, that is the bitrate of the code, and the recovered user data usually maxes out at 2 megabits per second under ideal conditions. Still, that is a lot better than 270 kilobits per second. The network architecture for UMTS is divided much like GSM into three main subsystems, user equipment, the radio network, and the core network. The most notable change is the radio network, now referred to as the Universal Terrestrial Radio Access Network, or UTRAN. I know, there is going to be a ton of acronyms, so buckle up. The UTRAN consists of base stations and a controller similar to GSM, but are now referred to as a Node B and Radio Network Controller, or RNC. The node B, for all intents and purposes, is the cell site. The node B consists of a baseband unit or BBU that serves as the processing unit for the cell site. It connects to the mobile network and communicates directly with the RNC. The BBU also connects to all the sector radios that would have normally been a part of the base transceiver system in GSM. The radios are now placed as close to the antennas as possible to limit the amount of coaxial transmission line loss. These sector radios are referred to as remote radio heads, or RRHs, and sometimes are referred to as RRUs for remote radio unit. The BBU connects to these RRUs with fiber optics using CPRI, or Common Public Radio Interface, the standardized protocol for communication between the BBU and RRH. The BBU and RRUs, or Node B, are all connected by the radio network controller and will have radio resource management and mobility management functions and air interface security. It also interfaces to the core network. The core network is generally the same from GSM. The circuit switch elements again consist of the MSC, VLR, HLR, and the gateway MSC connects to the external switching networks. The 
packet switch core would occupy much of the bandwidth available to UMTS devices and consist of the same elements from GPRS. The Gateway GPRS support node forwards user data from external packet networks like the internet, or forwards data from user equipment. It's essentially a large router. The serving GPRS support node, SGSN, handles the control aspect of user data such as mobility management, session management, and essentially dictates where and how data flows on the network. The SGSN is also communicating with the circuit switched network elements to obtain subscriber location information from the HLR and VLR. The main control node in the UTRAN is the RNC. It is the user equipment's first contact point in the network as the node Bs are only seen as a relay. When a user equipment powers up, it contacts the RNC responsible for its cell, establishes radio connectivity, and only then attaches to the SGSN or MSC. The user equipment maintains a relation to the serving RNC as long as it is active. At the same time, the serving RNC maintains information on the user equipment, such as which cell it's attached to. The RNC carries out radio resource management, some of the mobility management functions, and is the point where encryption is done before user data is sent to and from the mobile. The RNC connects to the circuit switch network through the MSC and to the packet switch core network through the SGSN. UMTS was able to address the need for higher speed data to user equipment, but subscribers' rapid adoption of smartphones was preventing many users from achieving the 2 megabits per second download, or even the 128 kilobits per second uploads due to network congestion. High speed packet access, or HSPA, would upgrade the UMTS packet switching core network and the UTRAN to accommodate higher data rates. 16 QAM would be used in the downlink instead of QPSK to enable data to be transmitted at higher rates. Eventually, though, 64 QAM would be rolled out for downlink and uplink along with additional technologies such as carry aggregation, MIMO, and theoretical data rates were calculated to be 500 megabits per second down and 70 megabits per second up. But theory and practicality were beginning to go their separate ways for UMTS. Most networks would top out at 50 megabits per second down and 20 megabits per second up. HSPA would struggle to scale upwards and there had been a desire to move on from any circuit switching elements in the core network. A new network that would be packet switched from the ground up would set the stage for LTE. So we'll leave it there. That covers UMTS, a 3G push for more data, more capacity thanks to WCDMA, and the UTRAN's ability to get higher data rates from the packet switch core. The circuit switch core remains from GSM that simply connects to the RNC and HSPA tried to squeeze out higher data rates using higher order modulation and some other technologies that would make their way into 4G LTE that we'll check out in the next video. Thanks everyone, and goodbye.